Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and in this video we're going to do the full review for this Lenovo P700i. I had already done the unboxing for this phone so if you want to know what comes inside the box and the general overview, please check out that video. And uh, first let me talk about a little bit about this phone and this is a budget oriented Android phone by Lenovo and it sports a 1 GHz dual core processor. Based on the Cortex A9 architecture, hence the performance is pretty good and the chipset is actually made by MediaTek and in my day-to-day -day testing, the phone was pretty responsive and I did not face any lag or something like that. And uh, the phone sports a 4-inch screen, it's an IPS grade screen, the viewing angles are okay, I would say not the best but uh, good enough and also outdoors the screen is legible, so that's okay and uh, no issues with the screen, it's uh, pretty crisp in my opinion and the resolution is standard. 480 by 800 nothing special before going ahead i want to thank pc world for providing this unit for review uh, let me talk about the physical overview the phone is a little bit bulky i would say it's a little bit thick also and a little bit heft it has but it's very comfortable to hold and uh, let me give you a physical overview on the top we have this 3.5 mm headphone jack the micro usb slot that will be used for charging and syncing is over here we have the power button again over here and here we have those two volume rockers and we also do get a dedicated camera shutter button on this phone on the bottom nothing but just uh, what do you say uh, uh, intent to open the back cover i'll show you that a little bit later and here we have the microphone and on this end nothing else Moving towards the back, it has a 5 megapixel shooter, but again, do note that it does not have any LED flash. We have the speaker grill over here, and the speaker quality is pretty good and it's loud enough. So, no issues. We have the Lenovo branding at the back, and the back is uh, kind of like texturized, so that's nice to hold, but again, it's made up of plastic. And as this is a dual SIM phone, we can open up this back cover. Let me open the And the battery on this is a 2500 milliampere battery, and we can insert the two SIMs over here. Uh, and also we can add a micro SD card up to 32 GB to expand the storage. The built-in storage is 4 GB but out of that you only get 1.75 GB but as we have micro SD card slot I don't think so we will have a problem regarding storage. The battery again as it's a 2500 milliampere battery and I did all my testing with just a single sim that's on 3G the second sim is just 2G and with the single sim I got above average battery life so that should not be an issue and uh, let me show you the android version that it comes with it comes with the android version 4.0.4 .4. if we go to about the phone and version info as you can see it's the android version 4.0.4 .4. and let me also show you the storage i did not add any micro sd card uh, as of now and i've also installed quite a bunch of apps and uh, the storage was 1.75 gb when i unboxed the phone i've installed some apps so again as i said storage should not be a problem also this phone does have a couple of sensors we also get what do you say a brightness sensor so it can auto adjust the brightness so that's nice let me show you the same if you go to display you go to the brightness as you can see we have the auto brightness option on this phone also we have a front facing camera but that's again just a vga camera man you can make skype calls with the same uh, regarding the speaker grill it's nice and the voice quality that i got was uh, pretty good so no complaints regarding this uh, that and we have these four touch type capacitive buttons at the bottom uh, but if you notice closely there's a slight color difference uh, the body is uh, kind of white and the main part of the phone is kind of a different color which is a little bit bad i think so this phone will look much better in another color that they have that's uh, the blackish color that looks much better this phone has 512 MB of RAM and we have this multitasking tray button. Let me kill all these apps and let's run this advanced task killer and again kill all the apps. Now nothing is running and let me fire up this uh, Android system info so that I can show you the amount of free RAM that is available. And uh, it's showing me 161. I checked it a couple of times earlier. It can go up to a 175 MB of RAM free. And uh, in my testing, I did not face any serious lags or anything like that with the phone. So uh, even with that much RAM, the performance was pretty good. So no issues with that. Now, as we are connected to our Wi-Fi network, let me just fire up the web browser. And surprisingly, I got great results with the uh, web browsing and it's loading our tech to bus uh, website. And as you can see, I'll do the pinch to zoom gesture. That is also silky smooth. And as you can see, the scrolling is also pretty nice. You can go to the full screen mode by hitting this like this and let me also open up one more story let's open up the steep link uh, router story 
and the change in orientation is also pretty quick no issues and it can play back videos that are embedded within the web page for example this is a youtube video that i embedded and uh, hi there this is rajit from techtobass.com and in this video we're going to do the so as you can see it can play back the videos and the volume is also pretty loud and clear so no issues uh, so in terms of web browsing uh, i was happy with the phone no issues with that also we do get the youtube app you can also play youtube videos uh, with that let me show you the same youtube videos and uh, let's just play back my own video let me search for that let's search for geeky ranjit and let's uh, play back this nexus 4 unboxing video and again as you can see no issues it plays back in high quality not in HD remember high quality only so let me get out of that now as we are talking about media playback let me also show you the video playback for that I installed the MX player you can download this from the Android uh, play market for free and I have some videos for example this is a 720p video I'm going to start, start over again and I noticed with hardware encoding, I was uh, it was skipping a few frames at 720p. But uh, for example, if I switch it to software decoding, then the video is very smooth. So yes, it can play back 720p videos without any issues. And as you can see, the playback is very smooth. So no issues. Let me play back one more video that I have. This is again a 720p video. I'm going to start over again. And again, as you can see, uh, very smooth uh, frame rate so it can play back video up to 720p without any issues let me get out coming to the camera the rate facing camera is a 5 megapixel shooter and uh, it does not have any LED flash and what I have felt is let me get out uh, let me open the camera app and it's the standard Android, what do you say, uh, uh, camera interface. You get tap to focus. And uh, the good thing is it quickly takes the snaps, for example. As you can see, it can quickly take the snaps. And it also has video recording. But I found out that the video recording is only limited up to 480 by 680. Uh, it does not record even 720p HD videos. So that's quite a shame uh, because I was expecting that it could do 720p video recording. Uh, coming back to the camera performance, let me open this. I've taken a bunch of photographs and what I found is that uh, outdoors the picture quality is pretty good. The details are also nice. All these pictures were taken with this uh, camera. But indoors as it does not have any flash, uh, the photos get to be a little bit soft. And as you can see, this is taken indoors. And in completely artificial light, I also took some shots, for example, in my office. And here... Uh, the, uh, and here the quality is pretty low it's very soft and also the images come out to be a little bit grainy so yes uh, outdoors the camera performance is pretty decent I would say but indoors uh, the quality is uh, low and as it does not have any flash that also does not help this one so that's it for the camera coming to the benchmarks again I got uh, mixed results let me just kill all these apps and first let me show you the Nina Mark 2 benchmark and this is Test the, what do you say, the GPU performance, I also ran it earlier. And I'm getting an average score of around 23 to 24 FPS. That is nothing great, nothing bad. It's a mediocre score. So you can play uh, most of the generic games uh, and even 3D games like, what do you say, uh, Dead Trigger, etc. And they run fine. So I would say uh, it also does decent gaming, but not very high-end gaming. And uh, the Nina Mark test is almost done now. And as you can see, we got a score of 23.4. And the GPU provided on this phone is a PowerVR SGX531. So let me get out. Let me kill this. I also ran the Quadrant benchmark. And, uh, and I'm going to show you the scores. Before that, let me also show you uh, that it's a dual core phone. It's uh, based on the MediaTek chipset. That is MT6577. It's a dual core. And... Uh, one thing I do not like is the sensors provided. Only limited sensors are provided. You don't get the, what do you say, the gravity sensor or the compass on this. So apps like compass simply don't work. For example, if I fire the cap, compass app, it gives an error. Orientation is not supported. So that's one thing we need to know. Uh, I also ran the quadrant and I saved the score. So let me show you the same now. 
and as you can see these are the quadrant uh, benchmark scores and our device got a score of 2532 which is not shabby it is equivalent to the galaxy nexus and the performance as i said uh, was pretty good and this is the breakup the total is 2532 out of that the cpu got a score of 4076 memory got a score of 2878 io got a score of 3437 2d is 424 and 3d is 1846 i have one more benchmark and let's uh, run the same and that's it nttu benchmark and i finished the benchmarking and i got a score of 6330 which is kind of nothing great or nothing bad and here is the detailed scores for you and you can just pause the screen to get an idea regarding the same so that's for the benchmarks let me also show you by playing some games for example let's run this uh, temple run game and i'm going to start a new game now and as you can see it runs at uh, fine no issues and the touch sensitivity also is uh, pretty good on this phone i did not face any issues with the touch and as you can see it runs at fine so let me get out of this game now and let's go to the home and let's kill this one and also let me run this uh, the shadow gun uh, the multiplayer version and let it just load i'll be back so it's loading the shadow gun game now uh, the dead zone the multiplayer part and it does take quite a while to load this game so let it load and i just want to show this game because um, the phone has the processing power to play the game but uh, it might not be able to play all the 3d games because of the ram that's just 512 mb but as you can see it can play most of the games and this is certainly not as uh, what do you say a light game this is a pretty heavy 3d game so as you can see we are spawning now and then see the graphics uh, the graphics are so good and the movement of our character is also pretty fluid as you can see so no issues as you can see so it's a decent uh, phone for even uh, gaming I would say light to uh, mid level gaming and as you can see no drop frames or anything like that I'm just moving my character here and there so this is shadow gun let me get out now let me also show you the keyboard and we get the standard ICS style keyboard as you can see and it also has this voice dictation so you can use this to type the message let me try the same this is a test message so as you can see that also works fine and let me change the orientation and the keyboard uh, also changes orientation in this mode so that's nice so let me get out let me also show you the dialer it's the standard uh, dialer and uh, the proximity sensor also works fine for example let me dial this call let me call this number and now if i go here see as you can see proximity sensor works fine and also let me show you the speakerphone quality the speakerphone is also pretty loud but it tends to get a little bit distorted at high volumes in terms of modification Lenovo did modify the ICS experience a little bit by default Lenovo provided us with just uh, three home screen that's one two and three but we can use this uh, pinch gesture to get to this home screen manager and from this menu you can add up to nine home screens so that's again brilliant and also the app tray is like this and the icons are circular and Lenovo did add some uh, applications for example the file browser uh, and I like this Lenovo app that they added and this gives you overview of the phone, the battery life that's available, the standby time that you'll get and also the apps that are running etc and consuming uh, the most power on the phone. So this is a nice app that uh, Lenovo has added and uh, apart from that it's mostly stock experience uh, and Lenovo also modified this app tray and I like the fact that we have these quick toggles so that you can quickly just toggle Bluetooth, brightness, etc. directly from here. So that's a nice touch. Uh, apart from that, it's mostly stock Android experience. And before I end my review, let me also uh, 
show you the multi touch points available on this one and I believe it's five and as you can see yes it uh, tracks up to five fingers so that's a nice thing and also the Wi-Fi performance of this phone was also pretty uh, good and this is the ICS style tray that we get let me kill all the apps that are running and let me run the speed test benchmark and I am on a 20 Mbps internet connection Let, let's see how well this phone can handle that and as you can see it's able to easily max out my internet connection it's showing about 21 Mbps download and the upload is around 14 to 15 Mbps so again in my testing also the Wi-Fi performance was very good so no problems regarding the same so what is my overall opinion regarding this phone uh, this Lenovo P700i, uh, the MRP on the box is quoted as 12,500, but I think so you can get it in the market for the street price of around 11,500 or so. And regarding the performance, I have no problem regarding this phone. The only con is that uh, we don't have a LED flash at the back and also the video recording is limited to just uh, 640 by 480. Uh, it would have been great if it would uh, record 720p the other con that i have with this phone is that it does not have the compass and the gravity sensor so that's kind of a bummer so if you want uh, a person who likes to use a compass a lot it will simply not work apart from that in general performance i don't have any issues with the phone so i hope you found this video review helpful that's it for now this is ranjit from tech2bus.com and i hope to see you in my next video